Okay, hi guys. I am back and I'm gonna show you, let me zoom out. I am gonna make a batch of sausages. I just made a whole bunch, I'm gonna show you. Okay, I've got more of these in the freezer right now. I just made a bunch of steaks. And what I do is I vacuum seal them and they go in the freezer. And this way, when we go to Erica's cabin, I just take a couple of these frozen and they make the trip and then it goes into the refrigerator and we have steaks to either grill on a barbecue or to cook up on a uh, in a cast iron pan. So because I made these, and by the way, when I use, some of these are reused for the second time. What I do is I study which way I should cut it open and then I wash it and reuse it next time. I mean, the package gets smaller and smaller, but this way I don't waste plastic because that's a big pet peeve of mine. And unfortunately, to be able to store these away in the freezer, I do need some kind of uh, either aluminum or plastic. But I try to use it up as much as I can. So I will recut and then use this plastic again. Anyhow, to make the long story short, I've got my steaks. I mark how many I have in each. This one only has three because that's all I had when I was finished uh, packing them. I had leftover uh, cooking broth that I used when I cooked my steaks. So now, instead of wasting it, I could either make a gravy. I'm going to show you. Let me put this back in the fridge. I try to use everything I have. I hate throwing things away. That's been stuck in my head since my mom was around. Here's a broth that I cook my meat in. There's garlic in here. There's all kinds of stuff. There's tomato. There's a bay leaf. There's um, olive oil, salt, pepper. So not to waste this, I'm going to use this in my sausage, in the recipe. Instead of using water, I'm going to use some of this. And if there's anything left over, of course, I am going to then put in a jar and make a gravy out of it that we could always put on some potatoes. But I did want to consume that broth, and I figured, why not? Let's make a batch of sausages. This way I could freeze that, and I could simply have more meat in the freezer for when my family wants it. So now I'm going to show you how I kind of make a batch of meat. But because I am going to measure it for you, you're going to get a recipe out of it. And I'm going to use, I'll tell you, usually I just kind of eyeball it. I'm going to use one, two, three, not completely level. If this would be level. You see, so just a little mound on it. And this is a half cup. So I'm using one and a half. I could actually use two this way I get. There you go. Two cups of my Vital Wheat Gluten. Okay. Now to this, I'm going to put... There we go. I have fava bean. What I get is a fava bean protein. And I'm going to put about a quarter cup of this in there. So I'm going to take this half a cup. And I'm going to take half of that. So that's about a quarter cup of that. So that's a quarter cup of fava bean protein. Now if you don't have fava bean, you can use chickpea if you want. It really depends on what flavor you're going for. I'm also going to put a soybean powder. I'm going to put a quarter cup of that. I am going to use, there we go, about a quarter cup. Mine's a little more because I got a little topsy heavy. Okay, there you go. That's a quarter cup of soybean powder. And now we want to mix this up. Here we go. We're going to get quite a bit of sausage with this. Okay, mix it up. We're going to put some salt. And I'm putting 
about half a tablespoon of salt. There we go. We're going to put a little bit of black pepper to taste, I guess, right? And the same thing with the salt. Just because I put that much doesn't mean you have to put that much, right? We're going to put rosemary in this one because my husband loves rosemary. So I've got about maybe a tablespoon. I might even put a little more. Yeah, one and a half tablespoons of rosemary. Now, if you don't want rosemary, don't put rosemary. Remember, whatever herb, whatever amount of salt, whatever amount of pepper is really up to you. We're going to put some of my mushroom powder. What I do is I buy shiitake mushrooms and I turn it into powder. So we're going to have one, two tablespoons of shiitake mushroom powder. Now, if you find shiitake mushrooms are too expensive, buy yourself some button mushrooms. Uh, those are the cheapest you can get. Put them to dry. When they get nice and dry, just turn them into a powder. And you don't have to spend crazy amounts of money at the store buying the powder. It's really easy to make, guys. Now, to this, I am going to... Here it is. I am going to put about a tablespoon of this. This is going to help hold that sausage meat really nice. Maybe just a little more. Play by ear, guys. If you want to make less, use less of that. If you don't want to use kappa, you can use agar. Your choice, you decide, right? Okay, now I'm going to use just a little bit of my chili mix and I'm going to put just a little bit of it, not a lot, let me see, I'd say about a tablespoon of this, not too much because my husband's going to know, he's going to say, did you put cumin in there? He hates cumin for some reason. Okay, I have now, where did I put my jar? Here we go. Shish Taihook seasoning. I know you're saying, what a crazy melange, but it works. Trust me, it works. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of that. See, there it is. A tablespoon of Shish Taihook seasoning you gotta put the seasoning in if you want it to taste good all right so now what i did was i took one and a half apples this is the size of my apple one and a half and i used half an onion i blitzed it if they're not super big and they're not super small and what that does that's going to separate your meat so you're not eating a chunk of gluten right so i will add that in and i'm going to toss it sorry guys i'm going to use my hands like i always do yeah i'm glad i'm back it's been a while, but you know what? It was a well-deserved time off for me. And I uh, I just needed the summer off, not making any videos. And it has nothing to do with you guys. I love you guys. You guys make my day. Even the ones that aren't so nice to me, they make my day. Because, you know, they actually came over <laughs> to see my video. Okay, so there we go. And now we will start mixing this in before I put any liquids. Just want to break it up. All right, now we're going to put a little bit of olive oil. And that depends on you. I know a lot of people want to stay away from fats. I don't mind a little fat. Okay, there we go. Put my spoon there.
Okay, we have one, two, three, four. I'm going to start mixing this so I see where I am. Oh, yeah, I still need more. One more, maybe. And this way, I get to use... I get to use that delicious... broth that I cooked my meat in. Don't waste. I will put the rest in a jar, that's for sure. Okay, I'm going in with my hands, guys. Yeah, I still need a little more. Not the bay leaf. Or my sage. Okay. All right. Should be good now. I might add a little extra kappa. Okay, let me clear up my space here. Oh, yes. That's what I forgot. Okay. We're going to add about maybe a tablespoon and a half of whole wheat flour and if it doesn't get super mixed that's okay too I've got a piece of garlic there what this does is just breaks up the fibers of the gluten so when you bite into your sausage, it bites almost like a meat sausage. Yeah. Mmm, that is good. Okay, let me just... were washed, scrubbed. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to push this aside and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of vital wheat gluten on the board. And we're going to put this on there. And we're going to sprinkle a little more. Just little different techniques I picked up as I've been vegan for like the longest time ever. Okay. And we're going to add just a little extra fat. I could even add a little extra salt. Montreal steak spice. A tiny drizzle of maple. Maybe not so tiny. Okay. 
Okay, and we're gonna fold that again. And we're gonna sprinkle a little more gluten. And we're gonna spread this out again. Doesn't matter how you spread it right now, you just wanna spread it. And what we're doing is separating our strands. This is going to help separate, so when you bite into that sausage, it's going to be delicious. A little extra salt, easy, not too much. A little extra oil. And we're going to take some flour, or you can use extra vital wheat gluten, up to you. There we go. And we're gonna flip it over. Okay. All right. Flour on the counter, flour on top. Okay, now I say, if you have people coming over, you want your sausage all to be the same, then I say, either get one of those measuring, those scales where you can measure your meat. Okay. That should be good. Okay. I'm going to go down in the middle first. Put this on the side. Okay. Depends how big you want your sausage. Okay. Now, we're going to need parchment paper and aluminum to wrap these up. Okay, I just want to go wash my hands. Unfortunately, something has to get wasted, right? Okay. We are going to put our sausage. I have to push this away so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. Just going to do one or two for you guys and then... Okay, now how much you use is really up to you, how much sausage you want. Okay. And then we use aluminum paper. My paper is thin, so unfortunately I have to use more than I want to. Okay. When you're making this, get the heavy paper. It's a lot better. Because you do end up using less. Okay, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. want to get that nice and tight. There we go. Squeeze as much as you can. 
And there you go. And you're going to make yourself rolls like this. Okay. You can even bend these over. And we're going to make another one. Don't waste those little bits. You could always stick it in. And I do not remove the skin. But if you want to remove the skin, again, that's up to you. Okay. Another sausage. Let's put some of this that we lost in there. Okay. A little bit of oil. You can also use refined coconut oil if you want. And I'm not even sure if I'm on camera here. Sorry, guys. Okay. And we need some aluminum paper. Maybe not as much as I used before. Kind of went a little crazy there. Pull up and just throw it down. Okay, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Try and get it as taut as you can. And there you go. Okay, here we go. Perfecto. Ah, oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, a little bit of. I try to get a little bit, but I don't seem to get way too much i broke my sprayer so yeah i always get a little too much now if it's a thicker paper you could always try and remove it in a way where you could use the paper again even if you use it to put it under some baked potatoes okay squeeze And twist. Now I do have some broth left over, so that means I will be putting that in a jar, and I'll be able to uh, make a little gravy with it. And these are great, especially if you just bake a potato. You don't have to do anything fancy to the potatoes. And grill some of these sausages and if you love sausages you got to try my pineapple ones those are the best but I didn't have any pineapple because if I had some pineapple at home I would be making those ones for sure and if you haven't tried my pineapple one you must 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 and I use apple in this one and what goes great with apple rosemary if you go back to when you used to eat meat, apple and pork, now we do apple and seitan. All right, so now I will cook these in my pressure cooker. I'm just going to push these over to show you. Here we go. I put a little bit of water at the bottom. Uh, I could maybe put just a little more water. Okay, I'm using a star frit, but you could use whatever pressure cooker you have. And we're going to put our sausage in here. And I cook these for 30 minutes. Now, if I was doing this in steamer baskets, I'm not sure if you know what those are, uh, where you have a cooking pot and then you have these Asian baskets that sit right over. So you would put water and then these Asian baskets that you could stack one on top of the other. Uh, then I cook it longer because a lot of the time the steam evaporates, uh, steams up on the side of the basket and you might have to replace some water. So those get cooked a little longer. You could even put these in a toaster oven. 
uh, you might end up getting some burnt grill marks uh, with the heat of the uh, your your grill uh, but you can cook these in the oven I would definitely cook them at 375 and I will put them at least an hour and turn them once in a while so you don't burn them but I would prefer the steamer I find that it cooks the best and then what I do is uh, I put them with the wrapper in the freezer I do put them in a bag and I throw them in the freezer like this and when I want to have sausages I pull out as many sausages I want unwrap them and then cook them just makes my life easy when I have it already and these will also last a very long time if you keep them in the fridge because they're sealed so well uh, they will last for at least two weeks in the fridge kept in the wrapper anyhow I'm gonna steam these like I said with my pressure cooker and it will be 30 minutes and then I'll show you what they look like once they cool off and they uh, turn into delicious vegan sausage. All right, guys. 30 minutes and they're done. I just want to show them to you. Jeez, that's hot. But here they are. Aren't they beautiful? Now, I would not open them now i'd wait till they get a little cooled off but we have yummy yummy delicious sausage there's a little mini me i'm gonna try that later oh this one came out maybe we'll try that one first yeah we'll put that, that one aside i popped one of the packages but here we are. Aren't they beautiful? Wait till they get nice and cold. You could even refrigerate these. And then when you're ready to have them, all you have to do is either grill them on a barbecue, you could grill them in an oven, or you can cook them in a pan. I love cooking these in cast iron pans. They come out delicious. And that's how easy it is to make vegan sausages, guys. This one here popped on me. But there is what the inside looks like and you see how easy it falls apart it has so many layers it's not just one block see how it's shreddable really really nice all right guys i'll see you when i fry one up mm -mm. Beautiful sausage. I mean, these are good to eat just like this. They cut beautifully and they fall apart. Notice how everything is just in layers. The way we rolled it out, the way we added some ingredients to it, it just created a very layered piece of meat and not just a block of gluten that a lot of people complain that is just too firm. This is nice and tender and all the bits of apple and onions in it separate it. Really, really nice. I'm eating the whole thing like this. <laughs> this is <laughs> I need to cook one up for you. Just a little bit of maple. It's just going to make that meat so beautiful. Now, you could wash these. This is the parchment paper I use. You can wash this and you can reuse this for your next batch of meat. So I'm just going to fry this up. Be careful. When you wrap your sausage, be careful. Don't do what I did. Especially when the paper is as thin as the one I was using. Uh, if you're not careful, you break the paper and then the sausage will pop out of your package. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but if you want your sausages to look like sausages, I say uh, be careful with your wrapping, make sure that nothing's punctured. And because of the agar, not the agar, because, well, even the agar, but uh, I use kappa, but because of the kappa, 
uh, the sausage was I was able to cook it right away you don't even have to wait for it to get cold mm. especially with the maple this is gonna be delicious maple and apple go delicious together And the rosemary, rosemary and apple. Nothing sticks, isn't it beautiful? Look at that. Okay, that's all it took. If you eat them as hot dogs, like if you could put this in a bun, it's great that way. You could cut them, uh, just put them next to some baked potatoes, and you've got yummy, yummy sausage. Mm. I thought it was recording. <laughs> all right, guys. I only cooked one for this video, but I just want to show you. Look at this. Look how beautiful and look how easy it falls apart. Look at that. So good. These are great on a barbecue, in a pan, in the oven. Delicious, delicious. And the rosemary and the apple, you could taste everything in your. The seasoning that I added, it just worked together. The rosemary and the apple, Kind of brings you back to that that roast pork flavor. Really, really good. Cooking it with a little bit of maple just brings the flavors up a notch. Really, really nice. You definitely have to try this. So really, really good. So I'm going to say I love you. And I'm going to say I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget, drop by, come to see the woods beyond and see what Erica and I have been doing. We spent... The whole summer uh, camping and going to places and just enjoying nature I needed the break and it just made me a little stronger so I can make some more delicious recipes for you guys so I'm gonna say I love you and I'll see you soon yum 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 mm, really good all right guys I love you <laughs>